Thank you. So, um, so in the first three lectures, I have explained uh, how heights are defined in, in, arc of in arc of geometry and how the arithmetic Hilbert-Samuel theorem and uh, in some cases, a uh, refinement of it uh, due to U1 uh, implies an equidistribution property of points of small height. So now the, the goal of the last lecture is to explain how these, these methods uh, were used by Ulmo and Zhang to prove uh, a, conjecture of uh, a conjecture of Bogomolov and actually uh, simultaneously another conjecture of Philippon. Uh, and uh, about uh, heights on abelian varieties. So, um, so the, the setting is, is that of abelian varieties. So X will be a an abelian variety over a number field, F, O will be the origin. And I will pick a, a, an ample even line bundle. on x so that um, the inverse image of L by multiplication by n is always isomorphic to L to the n squared for all n. And um, I had explained in the, in the case of in the setting. So you, this, this looks like a setting of algebraic dynamics. Um, this is. So uh, now there is a essentially unique adelic metric uh, on L, um, maybe such that uh, these isomorphisms. is an isometry. But maybe you remember that I need to specify an isomorphism there. So that if I specify an, isom an isomorphism there, there is a unique metric that, puts, that turns it to an isometry. And so now the specification of the isomorphism will be that uh, I will normalize, I, I will trivialize the, the line model at the origin. And now this, this isomorphism uh, is assumed to uh, I will assume that this isomorphism respect the, the origin. And now uh, there is a unique Adelic metric on L such that this isomorphism is an isometry. And, um, and, 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 and what? And this metric is semi positive. And so, given this adelic metric, I get uh, heights. So uh, if Z uh, in X is a, a irreducible closed subscheme, and uh, and of dimension D, the height of, of Z is just defined as, as the arithmetic degree.
of C1 hat of L bar to the G plus 1 on Z divided by G plus 1 times the geometric degree And in particular, uh, there is a map from, say, x of f bar to x that maps, uh, there is a natural map that maps a geometric point to the associ associated closed point. And so here I have hl bar it goes to, to the real number. And uh, this map is a neurontate height on x of f bar. And maybe it's important to recall that, uh, that this map that goes from um, the fp bar points of an abelian variety, so this is an abelian group, and goes to, to the real number. This is, uh, is um, OK, induces. A positive definite uh, quadratic form on uh, X of F bar. So that's, a, that's already a quadratic form on the Abelian group X of F bar, but it, it's, it's positive definite even uh, after tensoring with, with the real numbers. So it's maybe it, uh, there is one point that is clear without the fact of being quadratic is this relation. So this relation shows that HL bar of nx is n squared HL bar of x. But you don't really see, the, you see the homogeneity, but not the bilinearity. And so to, to understand that, there is uh, one main observation is that on a uh, There is a theorem of the cube on abelian varieties that tells you that uh, if you take the cube, the cube of x, and you take for every subset i in 1, 2, 3, you will take the map from x, x cubed to x that sends x1, x2, x3 to the sum of the xi's for i's in, a, in i. And there is a classical relation uh, that S123 upper star L tensor S12 star L minus 1 tensor S13 star L minus 1 tensor S23 star L minus 1 tensor S1R tensor S2 upper star L tensor S3 upper star L. This complicated Lie model is isomorphic to the trivial one. OK? And uh, so it means that I pull back by the sum of all coordinates, and I take minus sum, minus, with a minus sign, the pull back by only sum of two coordinates, and then uh, this is, uh, corresponds to all coordinates. And the fact is, not, not only is it Lie model trivial, but there is a unique isomorphism uh, compatible with uh, the, tri the trivialization at the origin. If I change, I have a very uh, little way to, to change an isomorphism. I can just change by a constant. And here you see that the, way, the sum of at the origin, I get L at the origin minus 3 times L at the origin plus 3 times L at the origin. So it's 1 times L. So I can just multiply. This, the isomorphism if it's not good enough so that it fits with the trivialization. And the fact is that then, then it becomes an isometry. And the reason is that this line model, this complicated line model, say D3 or this complicated line model D3 of L, it's 
trivialized at the origin, and uh, it satisfies the same uh, equation. Uh, n upper star d3 of L is isomorphic to d3 of L to the n squared. And so there is a unique analytic metric on this d3 of L that turns the isomorphism there into a, an isometry, and so this is necessarily the, that, that metric. And so what is the consequence with, with respect to heights? It says that the heights of x plus y plus, say, x1 plus x2 plus x3 minus height of x1 plus x2 minus height of x1 plus x3 minus height of x2 plus x3 plus height of x1 plus height of x2 plus height of x3. This has to be the height of x1, x2, x3 with respect to this trivial line model with trivial metric. So this is identically zero. And now there is a lemma that if you have a function on an abelian group that satisfies this, it's a quadratic form. So you get it. So there exists a quadratic form on x or f bar, and in fact also a linear form such that And uh, this quadratic form and linear forms are unique. And now uh, the fact that the line bundle is odd, is even, sorry, means that if I pull back by minus, by minus one, by minus one, I don't, do not change the line bundle. So it means that I also have the formula that height of minus x is height of x. And so necessarily, L, L bar is zero here, because, because L bar is, is even. When I, when I pull back by minus one, here I do not change anything, then it doesn't change, and it changes into the, the opposite. So necessarily that. So uh, you have the quadratic form, but uh, one other stuff which is also clear is that this quadratic form on X of F bar is non-negative. The reason is that if you take you take a point x in, in x of f bar, so that and then you look at the point uh, n x, the set of point n x for n in, in n, and the heights, which which is n two height of x, will be negative. Maybe it's, uh, I, I would uh, okay. let t take this. No, sorry, I will do that. So it's uh, okay. It's always negative. And uh, since the height of n x is n two times the height of x, and the height of x is strictly negative, those heights are distant. So the points x and n x are not equal. And, all, and they all have different heights. So I get an infinite set of points defined over the same uh, finite extension of F. All, they are all defined over the residue field of, of small x and, uh, and with bounded height. And this contradicts the theorem of Northcott. Okay, and so the same argument says that if the height of x is zero, then 
I have a sequence of points, sequence nx. All, of, all, all the heights are zero, so they are bounded. And they are all defined over a finite extension. And so this sequence can, cannot be infinite. I cannot have infinitely many number of defined over the same field and any elements. So it means that there are, for example, say two, two integers n and m such that nx equals nx. And this implies that m minus n times x is 0. And so then x is a torsion point of, of the abelian group x of f bar. In other words, the quadratic form QL bar induces a positive definite quadratic form on uh, X of F bar tensor Q. Okay? And this is this does not this this fact does not imply that fact. For example, on Z2 or on Q2, if you take uh, x minus square root of 2y squared on Q2, this is positive definite on Q2 and does not in, induce a positive definite form on R2. So, so one needs. Uh, a small argument to, to conclude, and the argument is as follows: Is it if you take um, uh, so? Let's argue by contradiction. Let's assume that uh, QL bar, say, of sum of lambda i x i is zero. So the x i's are. Are actual points and lambda i are real number. Now what I can do is, um, and so i will go from one to n. Then I can uh, take a finite extension finite extension containing uh, such that uh, the residue field of x i is contained in E. For Lee, for, for I. And then uh, one can apply Northcott's theorem in X of E. That tells you that the set of points of bounded height that gives you that the set of um, um, okay, the set of elements of the form sum of uh, ni xi such so that QL bar of sum of ni xi uh, is smaller than b is finite. And the ni's are integers. And so imagine what, that, what, what it means. You have, well, forget about the torsion, it's not a, 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 real, a really serious problem, but you have a quadratic form on a, on a space which is uh, non negative. And you assume that in the balls, so you have a lattice. This is a lattice of points, and you have a ball which is the ball defined by QL bar, which contains only finitely many points at each, at each case. As you, all, all the dilates of the ball contain finitely many points. And if the quadratic form is not positive definite, the ball looks like that. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a ball, it's a, it's a tube directed by the null space of the quadratic form. And then if you take the ball big enough, you will have infinitely many points in the, between the in this domain by, by an approximation uh, uh, result of say. Uh, and so this implies that the, uh, 
the null space of, of QL bar is, is zero, and so the quadratic form is indeed positive definite. So also, uh, uh, so the question of Bogomolov uh, well, so what is called the Bogomolov conjecture um, So assume, so this is a case of where x, uh, x is a Jacobian of a curve C, and C is embedded in, in x. And so uh, the question is that on x of f bar, uh, it said that so you you take at the, the points there, x of f bar tensor A, and you look at the of the points of the curve inside inside this quadratic space. And the conjecture of Bogomolov is that the image of F is discrete. Uh, for the neuron tape topology. In other words, um, that's not uh, there exists a positive real number delta such that The height of x is at least delta for any uh, x in C of f bar, except so there exists delta and a finite set uh, for finitely many of them. So in the ball, in the uni, in the ball of radius delta, for the height, there are there are only finitely many points of the curve. Of course, if you have finitely many points, you can take the infimum of the height on them. So you can decrease delta and take the smallest point of positive height. So in this finite set, you have points of height zero. Then uh, they, are, they, are, they are correspond to torsion points. And you have points of positive heights. So a corollary is a set of if you take the points of the curve that are torsion points in the Abelian variety, this set is necessarily finite. And this is in a conjecture of Lang. Or Manin, I don't know. No, this should be Manin. And this conjecture of Bogomolov has been generalized uh, by, uh, by Zhang for any subvariety of an Abelian variety. So generalization. And uh, here I should specify 
that the genus is at least two. If the genus is one, then uh, the then this, no, this is not true. And so. Um, Um, so that's two equivalent statements. So you take the, <coughs> uh, so the first one, you take the in X, irreducible and closed. And the statement says that uh, there exists um, a finite family, uh, say yj, of torsion subvarieties. So, kind of special subvarieties. So, a torsion subvariety. Will be something of the form uh, Aj plus Xj, where Xj in X is an abelian subvariety, and Aj is a torsion point. And so maybe one should write this over the over the algebraic closure, uh, over the algebraic closure. So yeah, there is a, fami a finite family of torsion subvarieties and positive real number delta such that, uh, so first of all, all these torsion subvariety are contained in Z. And second, when it, when it, wherever X is a point of Z minus the union of the YJ, the height, is greater than delta. So that's one statement. Let's say that the height is bounded from below by something positive, except if the points lie in a torsion subvariety. And in a torsion subvariety, what happens? The height, so the translation by a torsion point doesn't change anything because the height is defined, uh, passes to define modulo torsion, necessarily. And then in an abelian variety, the height cannot be bounded from below by, by a positive number because when you have a point, you can divide it by two and the height will be divided by four and so on and so on. So you can, you have, in an abelian variety, you have points of ar arbitrary small uh, height. Okay? So that's the best you can hope. For example, on, on the elliptic curve, the case, this is why uh, I had to impose a genus at this D2. If G is 1, then on, on the curve itself, you have points of arbitrarily small height. Just divide a point by 2 uh, indefinitely, and you get the heights going to 0. Okay, so that's the first statement. And the other statement is, is, is a variant of that. Uh, No, uh, I don't want to write that. Let, let's, let's skip with that statement. So a consequence of that is a conjecture of, many, of Manin and Manford. That says if you take z in x irreducible and closed, and then there exists a finite family, yj, of torsion cosets, or torsion sovereignty, so that yj is contained is contained in z for all j. And second, every point of z, which is a torsion point of f, if you take a, a point of, of z and uh, assume that it is a torsion point in x, then it contains 
it's contained in the union of the IJ. And for the same reason, if you have a torsion coset, um, it must have uh, of, of positive dim dimension that it will have infinitely many and, uh, uh, torsion points because uh, of an abelian variety, the torsion points are dense, they're risky dense, and if you translate by a torsion point, you keep the same. So you, ca you cannot do better. So up to now, I I've written conjectures. Uh, but I want to write down uh, the conjecture of Philippon. So which, in fact, uh, Philippon is cautious. So uh, I explained uh, on Tuesday that he developed an alternative definition of heights for varieties and so already in the first paper in 91, he, he studies this height, the neuron state height on abelian varieties, which he, he defines uh, using his method. And he says that it's really interesting to understand what are the subvarieties of height zero. So the fact is that for any z, for any z in x, the height of capital Z is always non-negative. This is something you can uh, um, well, okay, there are many ways to prove it. But, uh, and so the height is always the negative. So the question, uh, the question of Philippon is that the height of z is zero if and only if, so z is in x irreducible clo and closed, maybe xf bar, and if and only if z is a torsion. And the important implication is, the, the fact is that that implication is clear. Essentially because translating by a torsion point doesn't change too much. And if Z is a subvariety, an abelian subvariety, then if you multiply Z by N, you get, you get z. And since the height of nz is n squared times the height of z, you must have uh, both, both sides must be 0. Okay. And so now uh, for the theorems. So the first theorem that the, the initial, uh, this is due to Ulmo, the conjecture of Bogomolov is true. And uh, the theorem of, of Zhang is that the uh, the generalization of Bogomolov's conjecture is true, and uh, as well as uh, the conjecture of Philippon. So. And I should have said that as, as corollaries of these theorems, you have uh, proofs of the conjecture of Man in Mumford. But the conjecture of Man in Mumford uh, follows as a, uh, follows, but but it was a theorem of Renault. So one gets a new proof of the conjecture of Manning Mumford, but uh, OK. 
Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So, in fact, uh, what uh, regarding the dates, this is something like uh, 1998 uh, or 97, and this is uh, the same date. Uh, uh, but the, what uh, Jean proved slightly earlier, uh, around 95 is that the conjecture of Philippon and the conjecture of Bogomolov are equivalent. So it's the same to prove one or the other. And then uh, the history is that in 97, or maybe 96, Spiro, Ulmo, and Zhang proved the equidistribution distribution theorem, the one I explained yesterday. And uh, one year later, Ulmo understood how to apply the theorem to prove this case of the Bogomolov conjecture. And one week after he had signed uh, his preprint to Zhang. Zhang uh, proved, uh, concluded the, the proof with a, so, a variant of Ilmo's argument. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And then soon after uh, Zhang's proof, there, is another, there, there was another proof uh, proof uh, by David and Philippon. And the proof of David and Philippe, I plan to explain the proof of David and Philippon, but I, I won't have time. And this proof is, is uh, different. It does not use equidistribution, for example, but it relies on the same geometric idea that, is, that lies at the center of uh, the proof of Ilmo and Zhang. So. And so the, the idea is just uh, the idea of the proof. Uh, that if uh, the conjecture, uh, say, if those conjectures are not, are not true, there must exist in the curve or in the, in, in the sub-variety Z uh, sequences of points of of height going to zero that are Zariski dense. So start from uh, um, let, let's discuss the case of a curve. So let's say C nets. So if it's not if it's, if the theorem is not true, there must exist in the curve C. Uh, a sequence of points whose height go to zero. So from a generic small, so uh, it's by contradiction. Uh, points Cn, say Xn. in C of F bar. <laughs> and so to that sequence, we can apply the equidistribution theorem. So what we know that there is equidistribution. And so the measures delta of Xn will converge when n, n goes to infinity. To what? To uh, the measure that is, corresponds to the fact that I have a generic sequence in the curve. With, with respect to the line model uh, L bar. So this will converge to C1 of L bar uh, on the curve. So this, this is this measure. So on the curve, I have this, this curvature form. And uh, we will work at the Archimedean place only. So. Now one would like to, one needs to do a bit of geometry because, and to say, okay, these points, they have small height because they lie in the, in the Jacobian and this, there is something on the, that has to do with the Jacobian. But the, the, those points extend, they lie on a curve, they do not form a generic sequence in the Jacobian. 
course, because they lie on the curve. So one needs to construct from this sequence another sequence that will be generic in the Jacobian. And then the idea of, of Vilmo is you, one should look at the map from, say, f, from x c to the j to x. That sends x1 xj to the sum plus xj. Just, and it's known that this morphism is, is uh, generically finite. But it's not finite. Um, For example, there, 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 are, there exists some divisor of degree g that have many sections. And so they will come from, usually, a, a divisor of degree g by riemann roch will have a line of sections. The, the set of sections will, have, uh, will be of dimension uh, 1. But there are special divisors those which have more, uh, more sections. And then that will give uh, families of divisors, so families of sequences of families. But the fibers will, be, will have more dim higher dimension. So this morphism is generically finite, but not finite. And uh, is also subjective. Huh? So what Ulmo does is uh, take sequences of the form, so well-chosen sequences of the form x n1 x and j so i take points from a sequence but uh, i put uh, g g tuples of points built from my sequence and i construct them well and um, well chosen sequence of this form will be generic and small in C to the J. So one way to do that is you, you enumerate all sub-varieties of C to the J. It's countable. And you manage to you take points from this, your sequence, uh, well chosen, so that uh, you construct points that avoid one, mo one more sub-variety at a time. And they are small because the heights of all coordinates are small. and the, Natural height uh, there is a sum of the height. So. so that shows that this sequence delta of x and x and one, x and j, will converge to this measure, to the measure, natural measure on, on C, which with the product of that. So it's just C one of L bar. So it's just a pullback. Uh, I should have divided by the degree, sorry. And so this will converge essentially to the product to the to the to this uh, product measure on C on the complex point. So. But now, look at a uh, set. So, uh, so I will look at the image, which is a sum of the coordinates. And now, the, since this sequence xn1, xnj, 
converges to the generic point of CJ, and the morphism of scheme is continuous, the images under F will converge to the image of the generic point of CJ by that morphism. And the fact that this morphism is generically finite and subjective means that the image of the generic point Z here is the generic point there. So this sequence is also generic. And small. Because the height of the sum of points is given by a quadratic form, and so you have estimates. Uh, so uh, the triangular inequality. Or. So you get another uh, sequence, which is generic and small, in, uh, in the abelian variety of C. And so the images, so, so, so there is an equidistribution theorem that delta of xn1, xnj, this sequence will converge to this, uh, to, to this natural height on, uh, so there are two applications of the equidistribution theorem, one on C to the J and one in X. But now, you can apply change of variables. Because I know the, the limit measure here. And if I push, if I push the, the points by, by a map, by a continuous map, the limit measure there will just be the direct image of this measure. So consequence. Is that f lower star of this product measure, say, divided by uh, um, divided by the degree normalized will be uh, on X. So that's an equality of measure. OK? But now let us think at the way these measures are defined. Here on the matrix are absolutely smooth. So C1 of L bar, is, it's a 1-1 one, one form on the curve. And it's a pullback of the 1-1 one, one form of the same name, C1 of L bar, on J, by the, by the Jacobian embedding. And so from these equalities, these equalities of measure, in fact, uh, corresponds to, uh, uh, so let's look at a place where, here you can imagine that there is, uh, so there is C to the J, 2x, and, but that's something, that's a complicated morphism. I, I write it at this, at, as it if, if it were a, a finite morphism. But maybe there are fibers of higher dimension. But there is also ramification and complicated stuff. But let's look at an open subset here where it's et al. Um, OK. Um, <laughs> I should have, let's, let's do that. Well, okay. And the, what do we see here? Here we see that the measure is just given by a differential form. And, and here, it's also a differential form. And when I push down a measure given by a differential form under a finite sheeted covering, what I just add is the forms 
on all. So here is just a sum of all differential forms all, uh, on all sheets. Okay. And uh, on, on the other hand, uh, here it's known that uh, what is generically the Galois group of this covering, when it's a finite covering, it's just uh, uh, it's just a, a covering uh, of, of Galois group, of a, a symmetric group on G letters that permits that uh, acts on permutation on C. And so this map from the symmetric product of the curve to X, this, this morphism is itself uh, uh, birational. Just, and so that shows that on all these sheets, th this differential form takes the same value. So what, what I get here is not sum of something on, on various sheets, but it's just one sheet multiplied by uh, factorial G. And so you see in that way that, in fact, you can understand this differential form just by pulling back that one and dividing by factorial g. So the consequence is that, is that in fact, f upper star of c1 of l bar to the g is equal up to, a, it's proportional to c1 of l bar exterior g. That's the consequence. And now we just need to see from the geometry over there that this equality is impossible. Because this is a positive definite uh, uh, it's a measure with a positive with strictly positive density. So I have a measure which is defined on the curve or on the product of the curve by, a, by something which has a positive density. And here I am taken a, a measure with, in fact, positive density, but I pull it back by some map. And then I get, whenever I have fiber of higher dimension or whenever I have ramification, the density will uh, vanish. So here, this is given by a, a non-negative density vanishing on the ramification uh, on the non-smooth locals of f. So whenever f is not uh, injective on the tension space, this uh, the density will vanish. And so you see the contradiction. So there is a contradiction. And this concludes the proof of the theorem of Ilmo. Okay? So that's a very beautiful argument that shows that if you have um, a Q distribution properties for some sequences related biomorphism, then the limit measures need to reflect. Uh, these equilibrium properties, and so that gives you constraints on the geometry. Yeah? yeah. That it is? Sorry. But in fact, I have this equality of forms. I have this proportionality of a dense subset, and uh, then it, it extends because those, these are analytic continuous. This is an analytic form. This equality or this proportionality of a dense subset is enough to, to, to have it by continuity. This form uh, is it's a differential form with analytic coefficients. And same for that. So equality over the ramification locus, which is dense, over the smooth locus, which is dense, uh, is enough to, to get it everywhere. And so uh, that's the proof, that's uh, m even more than that, the idea of proof. And in the case of Chang, for, for the case of, uh, of Chang, uh, it's just that uh, you cannot play with the same morphism, but you have Z 
in x. And so the first sh thing to do is to reduce to the case uh, where the stabilizer of z is, is 0. So to do that, you introduce the stabilizer, the set of points uh, x so that x plus z is z. And you mod out by this stabilizer, and you play a little bit with the heights, and you see that if you can prove the, the correct statement on the quotient, that it's enough to, to then you get it on the initial variety, so first a reduction. And then in this case, then so then it, under this hypothesis, uh, Jenks obs observes that the map from z to the m times to, to x to the minus m minus 1 given by x1 xm maps to x2 minus x1, etc., xm minus uh, xm minus 1. This map is uh, generically finite, uh, subjective. But not, fin not finite. So it's generically finite, basically, because if you want to have two points to have the same image, they must they must differ by uh, something that. Uh, uh, In fact, this, the fact that the stabilizer of z is 0 implies that the intersection of x plus z for, for x in x, for x, x in z, will be blah, 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 will, will be empty. No, blah, 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 what do I say? Of course it's empty. Um, well, let's say that. Uh, so when, when you pull back, um, when you want to, to look at a point which is in the fiber of that point, it means so two points uh, in, the, in, in the fiber of that point uh, has something to do with the fact that you're intersecting x1 plus z, uh, x2 plus z, and xm plus z. And this will be uh, reduced to x1. Uh, OK. No, no, but uh, I have something with. OK, well, I, I'm not sure that what I wrote is true. But, uh, OK. Well, in any case, that's not very important. So you get something because so the fibers are related to intersections of transit of z. And because of the stabilizer property, that will be, you will get so generically a point, a point is a unique point in its fiber. And uh, it's subjective. I don't know why. And maybe I don't know if I need it. No, it's not subjective. No, I don't need subjective. And it's not finite, because if you look, if you take points x1, x2, xm, they, so the points of the diagonal, they map to 0, 0, 0. So the diagonal of z, if z is not zero dimensional, so, and z is not, uh, and the dimension of z is not zero, then the diagonal of z, which has positive dimension, is, is mapped to a single point, so you have no, no, not finiteness. And so here you have a geometric input that allows the rest of the proof to go through. And that's it. 